Super Typhoon Goni, known as Roly in the Philippines, maintaining that Super Typhoon Category 5 intensity. And in fact, to put it in perspective, latest satellite analysis show that these inner core winds are upwards of 300 kilometers per hour. That is the same type of winds you would find in an EF4 tornado. Not a typhoon or a hurricane. I'm talking about on the EF scale as far as tornadoes are rated. And this is 50 to 100 miles wide swath of winds here. This is going to be absolutely destructive. And for our friends out here on Captain Duanas, across southeastern Luzon, Legaspi, San Jose, Bay, right in here, genuinely concerned. I think there's going to be a monstrous storm surge as those winds start to funnel that water up into the bay there. Uh, I'm going to talk about this, but if you have any friends out here and even further inland towards Manila, this is going to maintain some intensity. This is what I was talking about with that satellite analysis, by the way. 161 knots on the latest analysis. We did see a tiny bit of weakening, but it's starting to spike again. It's the Philippine Sea effect. Bites us every time. Just such a dangerous storm. This is the official data from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, by the way. 287 gusting to 351 kilometers per hour. I was talking about the 300 kilometer per hour winds, by the way. Those are sustained. Gusts are higher. We don't have recon out here. We don't have the luxury for that. So we don't have hurricane hunters flying into this. I'm sure if they did, we would find just an outstanding minimum pressure. Now at 915, I think it's below 900 hectopascals to be quite honest with you. Radar out of the Philippines, there's that inner eye wall. It's very fuzzy, but it just shows you how close this is getting. This is what I'm talking about, by the way. Here's the track from the Japan Meteorological Agency going up the bay here in that right front quadrant. This is a coastal plain. I was talking about this earlier. I genuinely think there's gonna be a serious surge here. And all of these bays along the east coast as well, and even further towards the north and on the west coast, you start to get that backside wind wrapping in here. That's gonna to start to create that threat of a storm surge on top of all of that. So right now, Captain Duanas, Southeastern Luzon, Signal Force 4 in place. I think they should go to five. I, I, I believe that Pagasa should hold no punches on this. Uh, this is the higher end. We haven't seen a storm this strong near landfall, and I've covered every single one of them since 2009. We haven't seen one this strong since Typhoon Haiyan, near landfall at the very least. Uh, here's a look at our storm system. Outer rain bands already impacting. Uh, southeastern Luzon, I mean, it, you're starting to get to the point where it's almost too late to, to evacuate. You gotta hunker down and get to a higher ground almost immediately. Uh, tracks still bring it just south of Manila. That's why I think this is gonna move across southeastern Luzon, but it's still got, yeah, the mountains are killers here. It is gonna rip it apart, but it's still got plenty of moisture to work with in the inland sea here. So that's going to kind of compensate. So yeah, it won't be a super typhoon by the time it gets to Manila, thank goodness. But I do believe we're going to have at least a Category 1 and a Category 2 uh, type system on our hands, which, especially in these urban areas, that could result in some serious damage as it tracks off here towards the north across those mountains, as I was mentioning, and out here towards Manila. In fact, let's uh, take a little closer look here on the NCR. And this is what I'm talking about. You got those winds. They're, they're going to go over these mountains, but they're going to funnel down. So you got that chance of some damaging winds also coming across the lake here. That's going to bring, you might even see a little surge. This is a very shallow lake, but you still could see a little bit of a seiche or a surge if this does kick up those winds high enough, not to mention the winds that will be seen out across Manila Bay and that's chance of a surge here as well. And also coming in on the backside, Cavite, over towards Cavite City, I think we're going to be seeing some good damaging winds coming across the bay as well there as this moves towards north. Category 1 according to JMA at that point but uh, still enough to cause damage. So here is the thing, Captain Duanas, you're, you're getting it right now. You're already in it. They're gonna take a direct hit. I'm really worried. The power outage is probably gonna last weeks out there on that island. Damaging winds and rainfall also expected in Manila. And it, this is still a super typhoon. It, it really is. You know, thankfully, I've been talking to some friends here. People are evacuating. I think there's been hype on this storm. And hype can be a good thing. And I'm, I'm happy that um, 
this one is being hyped up and people are talking about because this is not falling apart look at this look at this eye wall replacement cycle look how kind of you don't have as much red here 12 hours ago and watch that concentric eye right there it blows right up we're starting to go through another eye wall replacement cycle those outer rain bands coming in <sighs> yeah it, it, it's over 300 kilometer per hour winds with this one guys there's that track from J jtwc pushing right over here and it does continue out towards the south china sea behind it which one is stronger well uh yolanda was stronger but uh it's it's, it's close at this point yolanda was at a different level a lot of people have been asking me about that. Thank you very much, by the way, for sending this in out of Cagayan de Oro. Uh, Nuri, I, I appreciate it. If anybody got some, anybody has some photos or videos you want to send in uh, of this storm system or any of the conditions before or after, I'll try to get them in my update. That was just that full moon before things really start to go downhill out there. By the way, in the bigger picture, our cold surge was pushing this down. And one reason why we've seen that, sh that shift further towards the south, but this is another thing I want to point out. Just the gravity well around this storm system because it's basically and this is a comparison it's not what's really happening it's like a black hole as in the meteorological world here because this is so large this is that sunny remember numerical guidance a few days ago was picking up on this becoming a major storm but since coney is just so massive it is sucking in at sunny it says I'm not going to spare any energy for you, and I'm just going to tear this apart. And that's why it's sunny. If you take a look at the forecast track from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, look where it's going. It's following the Angoni, and at the same time, it's staying weak, and it's basically a tail here. Um, so you might look at this and go, oh my goodness, but Coney is sucking in all the energy. It's going to tear this apart. It is going to bring extra rainfall to northern Luzon, but... Uh, that storm is just a monster of proportions we have not seen since Haiyan in the Philippines. Haiyan, Yolanda, known there. Everybody always makes that comparison. I have not made that comparison. I'm very careful on not making the comparisons between the two. This is close. Follow me on all these social media platforms. If you have not already, hit the subscribe button on this YouTube channel. I do this as a hobby. I've been awake for many hours now because I have a second job I also do and um, then I'm doing this this is important though I do believe because this storm's very dangerous so yeah stay safe out there guys